Hello everyone. You're joining a very special edition of On the Road to Freedom today. I'm going to share some of the personal side of walking through mile and going to heaven and some specific things that I know the Lord wanted you to hear. I hope the Lord lets Mylan see in the great cloud of witnesses, the new beginning of the ministry today and how we were able to honor him. So enjoy the show. Hi, my name is Mylon Lefevre and music is in my blood. I got my first big break when Elvis Presley recorded a song I'd written at 17 years old. I toured the world and played with some of the biggest names in music and almost died from a drug overdose. Something had to change. Everything did change when I gave my life to Jesus at a second chapter of Acts concert in 1980. Now years later, my wife Christy and I traveled the globe proclaiming God's goodness. So come on and join me on the road to freedom. Welcome to On the Road to Freedom. You're in our Texas backyard today, and this is the first place where Mylon and I filmed six years ago. This is where we started On the Road to Freedom. And so it's really significant today. The Lord spoke to me that this is where I needed to begin my first solo shows. Um, of course, you know I'm not alone. God is with me. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. So he's with me now. He's with you now. So I thank you for joining me today. It's a beautiful day in Texas, and I'm thankful that you joined me. And I want to thank you, Team Mylan. I want you to know that Mylan's vision will continue. I want you to know that you are helping me now to tell the world how good God is and how much He loves them. And I want to thank you all the outpouring of love that you have sent me since my beloved stepped into heaven. Thank you for all the emails. Thank you for all the text, all the cards that you sent, flowers were sent, messages. It has ministered to me so greatly. And I wanna encourage you that nothing has changed. John 8, 31 and 32 is still the reason why I'm going to do this show where Jesus said, if you will continue in my word, then you truly are my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Now, right now, more than ever, this instruction to continue in the Word is being put to the test. Will we continue under extreme pressure to quit or give up? Will we continue when we don't understand? Will true faith trust when it doesn't understand? And this decision to continue in His Word, as you know, determines whether we are His disciple. I know that's the choice that you make with me today that we're choosing to continue in the word because we're committed to be disciples of Jesus Christ. And I believe that today he's revealing the truth to us that'll set us free and free indeed. And this show today is to honor my beloved. So I'm really excited about sharing with you the celebration of life service that we had at our home church, Eagle Mountain International Church with pastors George and Terry Pearsons. And boy, it was an all-star lineup. It was such a blessing that night to honor my beloved. And you know, the word says in Romans 13, seven, to give honor where honor is due. And it is due my husband. He was my mentor, my best friend, my husband for 25 years. And every day he poured into me. He was the consummate teacher. Anything from theology to how I should load the dishwasher, he taught me every day. So I'm excited all that impartation he gave me through the years, I'm gonna to get to share with you. And so those stories won't stop. You'll still hear me reference him and maybe even use the word us instead of me because he's still with us, right? He's in heaven. I haven't lost him. He's in our future. He's not in our past. I even heard Brother Moore at the celebration of life service refer to Mylon in the present tense for that reason. So if I do that in our shows, that's okay, because we know Mylon is in our future. We're all on our way to heaven. 
I want you to know that on the day that Mylan stepped over, which was September 8th of 2023, all that day we were proclaiming today is our miracle day. Well, he did receive his miracle. We thought it would be here, but glory to God, he received it there. So praise God, I want you to know that he did lay hold of eternal life. When I asked the Lord, what should I share with our partners? What do I need to share with Team Milan? Immediately, he gave me 1 Timothy 6.12, and it says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, that's exactly what Mylan did. And I am well pleased. Mylan fought the good fight of faith till the very last moment. And then he laid hold of eternal life and he kept a good confession. You heard it on our TV broadcast and our church services with family and friends on phone calls. He confessed continually, Jesus is my healer. So this was well pleasing to the Lord. And I just wanna encourage you where he is, is where we're all headed. Heaven is our home. Mylon just made it to the house before we did. <laughs> you know, our citizenship is in heaven, Philippians 3.20 says, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I know in this earth, we're, we're citizens of the United States. And you know, in Texas, we believe we're our own country. And all the Texans who are watching, I know just said, amen. But the word says, once we give our life to Jesus, we are citizens of heaven. So praise God, Mylon just made it home before we did. So I wanna encourage you in that fight of faith that Mylon laid hold of eternal life and it was pleasing to the Lord. In fact, God talks about the heroes of faith in Hebrews 11 and in verse one and two, he says, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see and through their faith, those heroes of faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. And you know, my honey, he earned a good reputation because he kept his confession good in the presence of many witnesses through the whole battle of these last few years. And it says in verse 13 through 16, in the Passion, I love this version, it says, these heroes all died still clinging to their faith, not even receiving all that had been promised them but they saw beyond the horizon the fulfillment of their promises and gladly embraced it from afar. And you know, Mylon got his miracle there. They all lived their lives on earth as those who belong to another realm. <laughs> now this one makes me giggle because Mylon definitely was one of a kind. So he definitely lived his life like one who belonged to another realm. And anybody who knew him would amen on that one. <laughs> you know, his, he still lived those rock and roll hours. 3 a.m. was our normal bedtime. That's just one way he lived in another realm. He always used to say that we lived on the second shift. So that one makes me laugh. And then it says their hearts were fixed on what was far greater, that is the heavenly realm. So because of this, because of this heroic behavior, still clinging to your faith till the very last moment, your very last breath. It says, God is not ashamed in any way to be called their God, for he has prepared a heavenly city for them. So there is great reward for those who pass over in faith and all of us who agreed with him in faith. So I want you to know your agreement was not wasted. All of you who joined your faith with us in this fight of faith for Mylan's healing, God is well pleased with you. God is well pleased. Faith, why, why can I say that? Because faith is what pleases God. And you stood with us. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And you agreed with us, he is the healer. And he still is, by the way, nothing has changed. Jesus is the healer. And there's great reward for you, so be encouraged. And what I wanna share with you today, um, also with the memories from Mylan's Celebration of Life service is Mylan's story of victory. 
because that's what his life was. It was a story of victory after victory after victory after victory. First John 5, 4 says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Mylon's story is one of victory because of his life of faith. What he lived through and what he overcame in Christ was extraordinary. So I want to remind you of those victories today. You know, in his childhood growing up, Mylon had to uh, spend a lot of time with nannies, going to boarding schools, moving around the country. As many as 10 schools he went to growing up because his parents, the Lefevers, lived on the road. They toured and were gone a lot. So this was not easy for him, but at 17, and he talks about it in his book without him, one of the boarding schools he went to, he suffered severe abuse of all kinds at that school. And he was so hurt and angry. But at age 17, when he went into the army, because his parents couldn't afford for him to go to college, he went into the army. But because of that, when he showed up at the Memphis Quartet Convention in his army greens, he didn't know that the biggest star in the world was in attendance, and that was Elvis Presley, who had just been discharged from the army when he heard him sing the first song he ever wrote. And later, God brought restoration to Mylon when Elvis recorded without him. And he included it on one of his biggest selling albums of all time, titled, How Great Thou Art. And these years, this is when Bill Gaither knew him with his family singing group, the Lefevers. So I want you to hear what Bill had to say about knowing Mylon during those years. Gloria and I and the vocal band are here tonight uh, for one reason. Uh, we love this man. My relationship with Mylon goes back probably, what, 50, 50, 60 years ago. A lot of you were not born uh, yet, but, <laughs> and uh, what, a, what a sweetheart. I thought I was pretty cool until I met Myla. <laughs> that kid put the cool in gospel music real fast. And, uh, and what a wonderful time we've had together down through the years. We were with him about, what, two months ago for the Believers Conference? Had a sweet time talking about old times and uh, his op optimism. Gloria and I wrote a song one time called, and it really epitomizes him and his attitude, fully alive in your spirit. Lord, make me fully alive. Fully aware of your presence, Lord totally fully alive. This man was fully alive. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I loved it when Bill was talking about Mylon being cool. And one of the funny things that uh, I remember Mylon saying, because he would get that comment all the time, Mylon, you're just still cool. Even in his 70s, he'd get that comment. And Mylon would say to me later, you know, Christy, if you're trying to be cool, you're not cool. <laughs> so cool was all about not being a man pleaser, right? And Mylon was definitely a God pleaser, not a man pleaser. And the reason why I can say that is Galatians 1.10 says, Now am I trying to win the favor of men or of God? Do I seek to please men? If I were still seeking popularity with men, I should not be a bondservant of Christ. And boy, that is how Mylon lived. He lived with total dedication to pleasing God and God alone. And you know what he would tell me is if you're pleasing God, then those who are serving him, they'll be pleased too. So I loved what Bill had to say about Mylon. And then in the next season of Mylon's life was when he entered rock and roll. And the only reason why he went into rock and roll is because the church would not accept his style of music. So one of the things he was passionate about was that the church would allow creativity for musicians and for other artists so that they could use their creativity for the glory of God and not have to go into the world to use their gifts. But he ended up in rock and roll and in that scene he became a cocaine and heroin user. He became an addict and he OD'd several times and it was just the prayers of his mama that got him through. That's what I believe. He'll say that too. The prayers of his mama got him through those years. And he met second chapter of Acts, which was California hippies who had gotten saved in the Jesus movement. And so he could relate to them. 
they were laid back just like him. And he gave his life to Jesus in 1980 at one of their concerts with a simple prayer. Lord, if you can do anything with my life, I give it to you. And instantly he was delivered from cocaine and heroin addiction. He never went through withdrawals. It was a true miracle. So this victory over addiction, I, I let you know the first part of his life was victory over those feelings of abandonment and loneliness when he couldn't be with his family, with his parents. This next phase of his life was victory over addiction. And Mylon would quote continually, therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free and free indeed. He loved talking about freedom. That's why we named the show On the Road to Freedom. In fact, that title is from one of his rock and roll albums that he did with his best friend in rock and roll, Alvin Lee. And he was searching for that freedom even then. And so that's why that title meant so much to him is that we're all on that road to freedom. And as we receive the truth of God's word, we're getting freer every day. Amen. Well, 1 Peter 2, 9 says, but you are a chosen generation, That's right. a royal priesthood, yes. a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of Hallelujah. darkness into his marvelous light. You know, one version says he did this so that we would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. I love that because that's why we do On the Road to Freedom is so that we can broadcast His love around the world. And you can be a part of helping us share the love of God by joining Team Milan. You just go to Milan.org and click on Team Milan today. And you pray about what God wants you to do. He'll talk to you. He'll show you exactly. Yes. We need your prayers. We need your financial support. We will change the world with God's help and with your help, one person at a time. This next season of his life, when he gave his life to Jesus, was victory over legalism, victory over even he would call religion. Mylon was always against religion, and he was for a relationship with Jesus. And the, the reason why is because you know in his background, in, in his youth, when the church wouldn't accept his style of music, well, this happened all over again. In the 80s, when he started the first, one of the first contemporary Christian rock bands, that style of music, the church wasn't too sure about. They didn't know if you could really have that much fun and serve Jesus. <laughs> but he conquered in that. He had victory in that situation. He had so genuinely experienced the love of God. You know what he told me? He said, Christy, I was looking for love. That's what everybody's looking for. They're looking for the real thing. And so when he finally found that true love in a relationship with Jesus, Nothing was going to stop him at that point, even persecution from the church. So he kept forging ahead and he exercised forgiveness. He learned the power of forgiveness in that time. And when he forgave in that instance, God catapulted the band to their first number one hit. And then they became a headlining band all through the 80s and the early 90s. God gave him great success. Even his first Grammy was during that time. Not during the rock and roll years. His first Grammy was during the Christian years. God restored him again and gave him great victory in that season. And the band ultimately led hundreds of thousands of youth to Jesus. And you know, he would talk to me about this. Brother Hagen would share about his vision of going to heaven and someone walking around. He saw the most beautiful crown he had ever seen. And he asked Jesus, what is that crown? And Jesus told him, that's the soul winner's crown. And Mylon heard that story and just wept. And every time he would hear it, <laughs> he would say to me, oh, Christy, I'm looking forward to that soul winner's crown. And praise God, he's got it now. He's enjoying wearing that soul winner's crown. And it was all because of that season 
that victory that God gave him in that season with the band Broken Heart. He was so grateful for it. And you know, Michael Howe, one of Mylon's spiritual sons who also followed Broken Heart, he had some beautiful things to say about Mylon being a spiritual father. I'm so honored to be here with you guys to celebrate one of the most amazing people I have ever known. Uh, I remember as a kid, a preacher's kid in Arkansas, you know, back in those days, this was really rare. Now he was really kind of dressed up. The Mylon that I saw at first, I wanted to be him. I had the poster on my wall and not just because he had two feet of that long black hair and pyrotechnics at his concerts, but I saw how he allowed God to change his heart, but he never stopped being Mylon. He never, his personality never changed. And, and, and I saw how thousands and thousands of people came to God with that simple presentation of the love of Jesus for everybody. No matter where you're at, God's arms are open wide to you. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm just still shocked that later on in life we would become good friends and he would become a mentor to me and in many ways like a father to me. And um, this scripture really really sums up how I see my relationship with my It's from 1 Corinthians 4, verse 15 in the Message Bible. It says, there are a lot of people around who can't wait to tell you what you've done wrong. If you've been in church any amount of time, <laughs> we've all experienced that. But there aren't many fathers willing to take the time and effort to help you grow up. And uh, now, don't get me wrong, Mylon was not afraid of confrontation. And if you know him, I was joking with somebody that I think Mylon's love language at times was confrontation. <laughs> he was not afraid to tell you what you needed to hear to help you grow. That was at the heart of everything he said. Well, I hope you enjoyed what Michael shared. I thought that was powerful. Another young man that he ministered to during those years was John Cooper of the band Skillet. And that was a recent connection God gave us in the last few years. But it's so wonderful to know that at this home going, did you notice how we were able to connect Bill Gaither and, and Mylon's Southern Gospel upbringing with even his rock and roll days with Michael Howe and now John Cooper of the band Skillet. So I hope you enjoy these beautiful comments that John had to say about Mylon. He and his wife, Corey, sang one of Mylon's songs at the Celebration of Life service. This is one of the songs that John sings as a warm up song before the gig. If you want to see that song performed, go watch it on our YouTube channel. You can watch the whole service, the Celebration of Life service on our YouTube channel. But here's the comments that John had to say. The last thing I texted Mylon, I was reading a book and I texted this snippet and I said, man, I'm reading this book and it reminds me of you. And the quote says, in the middle of the night when the world is at ease and asleep, the prophet feels the blast from heaven. And the very last thing that Mylon texted me back, it says, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. <laughs> I told my wife, I said, Lord, if I can leave this earth and that be my last statement to somebody I know, I'm going to feel pretty good. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. I think the reason I connected with Mylon so much is that he's been where I am. He's done what I've done and he's one of the ones who did it right. This business is filled with a lot of people that will talk a lot about Jesus. There's far fewer people that want to live like Jesus. And Mylon was somebody that helped me do that. He didn't care about his, his name and his fame. He cared about the name that is above every name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the ruler of the kings of all the earth. And he helped me to see that. And I want to tell this quick story. If you know Mylon, you'll think this is hilarious. If not, you might just think I'm crazy. But I said, hey, I'm working on music. I'm, I'm, I'm praying. And he said, what you, what you praying about? I said, I'm praying that God will give me songs and we'll say what he wants us to say. And he said, well, he said, when you're writing a song, really all you're after is the anointing. <laughs> and I said, yeah. And he said, yeah, you want to hear something cool? And I said, always, Mylon, everything you say sounds cool to me. And he says, you know what? The Word of God is already anointed. So if you just sing Scripture 
and you just speak scripture and you just say things that come from scripture, you ain't even got to worry if it's anointed. And then you know what just might happen if you get after it? That's Mylon talk. If you get after it and you add your talent and you add your voice and you add your faith, well, you just might find you're in the double anointing. <laughs> And if you don't mind, then you think that's funny. Well, in closing today, I just want to encourage you with this. Mylon said to me the week he went to heaven, he said, God's been talking to me, Christy. Jesus is coming sooner than we think. And then he said this was so beautiful to me. He said, so Christy, we're not going to be apart for very long. So if you followed us through the years, you've heard Mylon say, Jesus is coming soon. And we need to take a whole bunch of people with us to heaven. I encourage you to make your life count, just as Mylon did. We'll all stand before the Lord one day. And what we do in the earth to complete our God-given assignment will determine if we hear, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. And I believe my honey heard those words from the master. So let Mylon's example today that we've shared encourage you to make a new fresh commitment and dedication to your heavenly assignment to finish your course. So will you say this after me by the grace of God? I will fight the good fight of faith. I will finish my race and I will keep the faith. Amen. I'm in agreement with you. We're going to do that by the grace of God. Hallelujah. So if you want to read the full story and all the details, check out Without Him, Mylon's autobiography. And all of his audio teaching is free on mylon.org. His message still continues. And our podcast, if you're in a hurry and you can't watch On the Road to Freedom, well, then take it on the go. Everywhere your favorite podcast is available. And our Church on the Run daily digital devotionals, he would not want you to miss those. Now today we were only able to get to half of the Celebration of Life service, but next week I want to share with you some more special moments in part two. So make plans to join me. Now this closing line, I've said with my honey, 332 shows. So I need your help now. Will you say it with me? All of these faith resources are all ways for you to stay in the Word because that will keep you, here we go, on, on the, the road, road to freedom. freedom.